In this video, we're going to take a look at section 7.6, which is graphing f of x equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're still going to be graphing parabolas in this section. Now what we saw in section 7.5 was our function was in this form, f of x equal to a times x minus h squared and then plus k. So this is what we saw in section 7.5. Now in 7.6, our function is going to be of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now when we're graphing these parabolas in this section, okay, we still want to figure out what the vertex is. It's still our very first step. But now to find the vertex, it's a little bit different. Okay, so to find the vertex, we have a formula. First, we need to figure out what the x-coordinate is. So the x coordinate is given by the formula x is equal to negative b over 2a. Now once we figure out what our x coordinate is for our vertex, then we're going to plug it into our function to figure out what our y coordinate is. Okay? Because remember the vertex it's an actual point and each point has the form of an ordered pair. You have your x coordinate and then your y coordinate. So this formula gives you the x coordinate and then you're going to plug it in and then it will give you what the y coordinate is. Okay. Now after we find the vertex we still need some additional points. So those additional points are going to be our intercepts. So we're going to find the x and y intercept. So x intercepts you're going to set f of x equal to 0. In other words set y equal to 0 so change y into a 0 and then solve for x. Now y intercept you set x equal to 0 and then solve for y. And now we have maximum and, uh, maximum and minimum values. If our a is bigger than 0, that means our parabola opens upward, which means that we have a minimum value at the vertex. So we have a minimum value at the x coordinate. And the actual minimum value is the y coordinate. Now, if a is less than zero, so if your a is negative, our parabola is going to be opening downward, which means we have a maximum value. So the maximum value occurs at the x coordinate for the vertex, and the actual max value is the y coordinate. Let's take a look at an example. So graph the function by finding the vertex and the intercepts. Identify max or min value. So we have the function y, uh, f of x equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. So remember, f of x, we could just change into a y. So we have y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. So let's go ahead and find our vertex to start. So... So we want to find out the vertex. So to find the vertex, we have x is equal to negative b over 2a. So we have x is equal to negative, and now our b coordinate is negative 2. We have all over 2 times a. So all over 2 times, and then our a, which is 1. Now let's go ahead and simplify. We have negative negative 2, which is positive 2, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So we have 2 over 2, which is 1. So our x coordinate for the vertex is 1. Now we go ahead and plug it in to figure out what our y coordinate is. So we have y is equal to 1 squared minus 2 times 1 and then minus 3. Let's go ahead and simplify. So 1 raised to the second power gives us 1. We have minus 2 and then minus 3 which gives us negative 4. So our ordered pair would be 1, negative 4. This is our vertex. Now let's go ahead and find out the x-intercepts. So x-intercepts is when y is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug in 0 for y. And then solve for x. So we have 0 is equal to, we have x squared minus 2x minus 3. And now we have to solve for x. Well, to solve for x, since I have a quadratic equation, what I'm going to try first is to factor it. So in order to factor, 
I need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 3 and then add up to negative 2. Well, I could use negative 3 and positive 1. So this factors in 2x minus 3 times x plus 1. Okay, well, now we go ahead, set each factor equal to 0, and then solve. So first equation, add 3 to both sides. Okay, so we get x is equal to 3. And then the other equation, we're going to go ahead, subtract 1 from both sides. We get x is equal to negative 1. And now we have two x-intercepts. So we have 3 comma 0, and then we have negative 1 comma 0. Now, still one other point to, uh, one other point to find, which is the y-intercept. Now, y-intercept, this is when x is equal to 0. So we're going to plug in 0 for our x. So we have y is equal to 0 squared minus 2 times 0. Then we have minus 3. Well, this gives us y is equal to negative 3. So we have the point 0, negative 3. Okay. Now let's go ahead and plot our points, and we could graph our parabola. So first, let's start off with the vertex, which is 1, negative 4, which is this point right over here. Then we have our x-intercepts. We had 3, 0, and then we have negative 1, 0. And then our y-intercept, which is 0, negative 3. Okay, so in this particular case, we have four points. Now I'm going to draw my, remember the axis of symmetry from the previous section. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes right through the vertex. And now we could use our axis of symmetry to find one, uh, another, another point, an additional point. Now since the x-coordinate for our y-intercept, it's one unit away from our vertex. If I go one unit the other direction, my y-coordinate has to be the same. So that leaves me with the point 2, negative 3. And now I have an additional point, which is going to help you draw a more accurate graph. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try that again. Let's go ahead and connect them with each other. And then we have our parabola. So notice our parabola opens upward. So since it opens upward, that indicates that we have a minimum value. Okay. So we have a minimum value of, so min value of, now what's the y coordinate in the vertex? So it's negative four. And we can put some additional information at x equal 2, and then whatever our x coordinate was in the vertex. So the actual minimum value is negative 4, and it occurs at x equals 1. Let's take a look at another problem. Okay, so graph the function by finding the vertex and the intercepts. Identify max or min value. Okay, so first let's go ahead, let's change our f of x into a y. So we have y is equal to negative x squared minus 4x minus 2. Now, just by the way the equation is given to me, I can tell right away if this is going to have a maximum or a minimum. So since my a here is negative 1, this means it opens downward. So if it opens downward, that means we have a maximum value. So let's go ahead, let's begin by finding the vertex. Okay, so vertex, we have to figure out our x coordinate first. We have x is equal to negative b over 2a. We have x is equal to negative, and then our b in this situation is negative 4. And I have all over 2 divided, uh, all over 2 times my a, which is negative 1. Simplify. So negative, negative 4 gives me positive 4, all over 2 times negative 1, which gives me negative 2. So this gives me negative 2. So my x-coordinate for the vertex is negative 2. So now let's figure out what the y-coordinate has to be. And that's by plugging in negative 2 for our x. So we have negative, and then we have negative 2 squared, minus 4 times negative 2. And I have minus 2. So I get y is equal to negative. Now negative 2 raised to the second power gives me positive 4. But now that minus on the outside makes it negative 4. 
And then I have negative 4 times negative 2. It gives me positive 8. And then I have minus 2. So I have y is equal to, so negative 4 plus 8 gives me positive 4. Positive 4 minus 2 gives me 2. So my vertex here is negative 2 comma 2. Okay. Now we have to figure out what our x-intercepts are. So remember, for the x-intercepts, this is when y is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug in 0 for our y. So if I plug in 0 for my y, I have 0 is equal to negative x squared minus 4x minus 2. Okay. Now since I have an equation, one thing that would be a little helpful is if my x squared was positive. So what I could do here is I can multiply each term by negative 1. Now I'll change it to positive. So I have negative 1 times 0, which is 0. Now all of my signs are going to change. So I have positive x squared plus 4x plus 2. Okay, well now I have this equation to solve. To solve this equation, first I would try to factor. But in order to factor this out, I need two numbers that multiply to give me positive 2 and then add up to 4, which is impossible. So I can't factor out the right hand side. So what I'm going to rely on is the quadratic formula. So I have x is equal to negative, and then my b, which is 4, and I have plus or minus the square root of b squared, so I have 4 squared, minus 4 times a, my a is 1, and then times c, which is 2. And I have all over 2a, so all over 2 times and my a, which is 1. Now let's go ahead and simplify. We get x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of, so I have 4 raised to the second power, which gives me 16. And then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 2 gives me negative 8. So I have 16 minus 8 all over 2. Continue to simplify. We get x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 8 over 2. But this could even be simplified further because in the square root of 8, I could simplify into... 2 square root of 2, and I have divided by 2. And now since each one of these terms are divisible by 2, I could go ahead and divide them by 2 to simplify it even further. So 2 goes into 2 once, it goes into this 2 once, and it goes into 4 2 times. So I have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2. Now this gives us two x-intercepts. One using each uh, sign. So we have the point negative 2 plus the square root of 2, comma 0. And then our other ordered pair would be negative 2 minus the square root of 2, comma 0. But now in order to identify where these are, we're going to have to actually just approximate it. So we have to put it into our calculator and get an approximation. So negative 2 plus the square root of 2. This gives us negative 0 0.58. It actually keeps going. Here, let's change this to, uh, I'm going to route to two decimal places, which gives me negative 0 0.59. And then my other x-intercept, let's put comma 0. And then our other x-intercept, so negative 2 and then minus square root of 2. This gives us negative 3.4. 1. And we have comma 0. Okay. So now we've found our x-intercepts. Let's go ahead and figure out what the y-intercept is. Well, y-intercept, this is when x is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug in 0 for our x. And then solve for y. So we have y is equal to negative and then 0 squared. Minus 4 times 0. And then we have minus 2. So if we simplify all this, this gives me y equal to negative 2. So my ordered pair here is 0, negative 2. So let's go ahead and plot these points. So let's start with the vertex. So negative 2 
comma 2, which is this point right over here. Now my x-intercepts, remember we had to approximate where they were because they gave us decimals. So we had negative 0 0.590, 0. so negative 0 0.590 is going to be mean between 0 and negative 1. Let's say about right there. And then the other one we had negative 3.41 comma 0, which is about right over here. And then we have a y-intercept of 0, negative 2. So 0, negative 2 is this point. And now remember, we could always use the axis of symmetry to find an additional point. Okay. So now since this point is 2 units away from my vertex, well, if I go 2 units the other direction, my y-coordinate has to be the same, which puts me at negative 4, negative 2. So now that help me draw a more accurate graph. Now let's connect them with each other, and we get our parabola. Now notice since this parabola opens downward, we have a maximum value that occurs at the vertex. So in this case, we have a max value of the y-coordinate, which is 2, at the x-coordinate, which is negative 2. Take a look at another problem. Okay. Next example, graph the function by finding the vertex and the intercepts, and then identify max or min value. So this time we have the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 7. So first, let's go ahead and change our f of x into a y. So we have y is equal to x squared minus 4x and then plus 7. So let's begin by finding the vertex. So first we find the x coordinates. We have negative b over 2a. So we have x is equal to negative and then our b in this, in this case is negative 4. And we have all over 2 times a. So all over 2 times and then our a which is 1. So we have negative negative 4 which is positive 4 divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. So we get x is equal to 2. Okay. Now let's go ahead and figure out our y-coordinate. So we have to plug it in to our equation to find out what our y is. So we have y is equal to, we have 2 raised to the second power, minus 4 times 2, and then plus 7. So we have y is equal to 4 minus 8 plus 7, so we get y is equal to, so negative 4 minus 8 is negative 4, negative 4 plus 7, which gives us 3. So our coordinates for the vertex is 2 comma 3. Okay, well now let's go ahead and find the x-intercepts. So x-intercepts, this is when y is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and change y to 0 and then solve the equation for x. So we have 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 7. Now, if I try to factor this out, I need two numbers that multiply to give me positive 7, but add up to negative 4, which is impossible. So now I have to go ahead and use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. So I have x is equal to, I have negative and then b, which is negative 4, plus or minus square root of b squared, so I have 4 squared minus, so let me scratch that, this is negative 4 squared, because my b is negative 4, and then I have minus 4 times a, which is 1, and then times c, which is 7, I have all over 2a, so all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. Now let's go ahead and simplify. We have x is equal to, so negative negative 4 is positive 4, and we have plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 28 all over 2. So now I have x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of, so 16 minus 28 gives us negative 12. And we have all over 2. We have x is equal to 4 plus or minus. Now, since I have a negative inside the square root, I'm going to put an i and then change that to positive 12. 
Okay, but now we could continue to simplify because square root of 12 can be simplified. I could take out a 2. So I have 2i and then I'm going to be left with the square root of 3. And I have all over 2. Now one last step, since each one of these is divisible by 2, I can go ahead and divide them all by 2. And this will be completely simplified. So I get x is equal to 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. Now, since we ended up with complex solutions for our x-intercepts, what that means is that there actually isn't any x-intercepts. No x-intercepts. So we lost out on two points for our graph. Okay. So whenever you're in the process for solving, or whenever you solve for your x, when you're trying to figure out your x-intercepts, if you end up with complex numbers, what that means is that there isn't any x-intercepts. Well, we could still figure out what the y-intercept is. So our y-intercept, remember this is when x is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug in 0 for x. So we have 0 squared minus 4 times 0, and then plus 7, which gives us y is equal to 7. So that gives us the ordered pair 0, 7. Well, let's go ahead and plot the points that we do have. Well, we have the vertex, which is 2, 3. And then we have our y-intercept, which is 0, 7. And we can find out at least another point by using our axis of symmetry. So since this point is 2 units away from the vertex, if I go 2 units in the other direction, my y-coordinate has to be the same. So that gives me the point 4, 7. And now we could just use these three points to graph our parabola. And notice that our graph, it does not cross the x-axis. Because remember, when we try to figure out the x-intercepts, we ended up with complex numbers, which meant there wasn't any x-intercepts. Our graph is never going to cross that x-axis. Another way that we could tell that there isn't any x-intercepts without even solving is okay we have our vertex and now since my a here is positive one we know that the graph has to open upward okay well if right here is my vertex and my graph has to open upward my parabola has to open upward there's no way it's going to cross the x-axis another that's another way that we can tell that there is any x-intercepts now we also had to identify if this was a max or a minimum value if it had a max or a minimum value well, since the parabola is opening upward, okay, we have a minimum value at the vertex. So we have a minimum value of, so we have a min value of, and then our y coordinate of the vertex, which was 3. And this occurs at x equals 2. Let's take a look at one last problem. So graph the function by finding the vertex and the intercepts. Identify max or min value. And we have g of x is equal to negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. Well, first I'm going to change g of x into y. So we have y is equal to negative 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. And now we have to figure out what our vertex is. Right away. Since my a here is negative 2, I know that this parabola opens downward. So we have vertex at x equal to negative b over 2a. So I have x is equal to negative, and then my b, which is negative 2, I have divided by 2a. So I have divided by 2 times, and then my a, which is negative 2. Simplifying, so a negative negative 2 gives me positive 2, and I have all over 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. So this simplifies into negative 1 half. Perfect. So now we have a fraction as our x-coordinate for the vertex. Well, let's go ahead and find out what the y-coordinate is. So we have y is equal to negative 2 times, so we're going to plug in negative 1 half for our x. So we have negative 2 times negative 1 half squared minus 2 times negative 1 half, 
and we have plus 3. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. So we have y is equal to negative 2 times negative 1 half raised to the second power gives us positive 1 fourth. So it's negative 1 half times negative 1 half, which gives us 1 over 4. Now negative 2 times negative 1 half, this gives us a positive 1. We have plus 3. So now we have y is equal to negative 2 times fourth. Negative 2 times 1 fourth, this gives us negative 1 half. So right here I can cross cancel. 2 goes into 2 once, it goes into 4 2 times. So I'm left with negative 1 over 2. Then I have plus, okay, 1 plus 3, which gives me 4. So I have negative 1 half plus 4. Well, this 4, I'm going to have to change this into a fraction with the same denominator. So this would become 8 over 2. So our y coordinate is 7 halves. So our ordered pair, we have negative 1 half, comma, 7 halves. Well, now let's go ahead and find out what our x-intercepts are. This is when y is equal to 0. So we have 0 is equal to negative 2x squared minus 2x and plus 3. Okay. So I want my x squared term to be positive. So let's multiply. So since I have an equation now, I can multiply by negative 1. So I can fix that. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. Negative 2x squared times negative 1 gives me positive 2x squared. And I have plus 2x, then minus 3. Okay. Now we can go ahead and try to factor this out. I'm going to use the trial and error method to see if I could come up with a 2x for my middle term. Okay, so just to recap, when I multiply these two terms together, it has to give me this very first term, 2x squared. So my only possibility is 2x and x. And now when I multiply the last two terms together, when I multiply these with each other, it has to give me negative 3. Okay, well, if we get negative 3, only possibility is to say let's minus 3 and then plus 1. But if I check the middle term, this gives me negative 3x, this gives me positive 2x. And if I add them, it gives me negative 1x, which is not positive 2x. So that's not going to work out. Let's try something else. I did positive 3x and then minus 1. This will give me positive 1x for my middle term, which is not going to work. And now even if I switch the 3 and the 1 around, this work, this gives me 1x, and then this gives me negative 6x. If I add them, it gives me negative 5x. And if I change the signs, it's still not going to work out. Okay, so this quadratic equation, I cannot factor it. Okay, so what I'll have to do is I have to use a quadratic formula to solve it. Now first let's check to see if there is going to be any x-intercepts. So let's start off with the vertex. We have negative one half and then seven halves. So negative one half and then seven halves is this point right over here. And now our parabola since our a is negative, since our a is negative, it has to open downward. So since it has to open downward, okay, our parabola will look something like this. Look at that. Our parabola is going to look something like this, which means that we do have some x-intercepts. Okay, so let's figure out what the x-intercepts are. So we have, let's plug it into the quadratic formula. We have negative and then b. Our b in this case is 2. I have plus or minus the square root of b squared, so I have 2 raised to the second power, minus 4 times a, well, my a in this case is 2, times c, which is negative 3, and then I have all over 2a. So all over 2 times, and then my a, which is 2. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify. I get x is equal to negative 2, plus or minus the square root of 4 times, or 4, and then negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 3 gives me positive 24. Then I have all over 2a. So my a was 2, so I have 2 times 2, which gives me 4. Now let's simplify. We get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 24 gives me 28. And I have all over 4. 
Now, square root of 28, I could simplify it. So I have x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus. Now, square root of 28, I'll be able to take out a 2 from there. And I'll be left with square root of 7. I have all over 4. And now, simplifying, since each one of these terms can be divisive, uh, divided by 2, I can go ahead and divide them all by 2. So 2 goes into 2 once, it goes into 2 once, and it goes into 4 two times. Let's go up here. So I have x is equal to, I have negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 7 over 2. So now remember this gives me two x intercepts. So I have negative 1 plus the square root of 7 over 2. Square root of 7 over 2 and comma 0. And then my other one is negative 1 minus the square root of 7 over 2 comma 0. But now, these points, I don't know where they are on the graph. So let's go ahead and put into our calculator so we get an approximation. So negative 1 plus the square root of 7. I'm going to get a result for that. And then I'm going to divide that by 2. So this gives me 0 0.82. And then my other x-intercept, negative 1 minus, and then the square root of 7. I have a result, and then dividing that by 2, I get negative 1.82. Okay, so now I have my x-intercepts. Well, now let's go ahead and figure out what our y-intercept is. So y-intercept, this is when x is equal to 0. So if I plug in 0 for my x, I get y is equal to negative 2 times 0 squared minus 2 times 0. And then I have plus 3. So I get y is equal to 3. So that gives me the ordered pair 0, comma, 3. Okay, now let's plot our points and then we could draw a problem. So we already drew our vertex negative 1 half and then 7 halves. 7 halves is the same as 3 and 1 half. Now our x intercepts, we had negative 1.82, which is about that point right there. And then we had 0 0.82, which is about right over here. And then we had the y-intercept, which was 0, 3. Okay. Well, now we could also use the axis of symmetry to find another point. So axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. Okay. So I'm going to use the y-intercept. I'm going to use the axis of symmetry to get an additional point from that. I get the point negative 1, comma, 3. Now let's go ahead and connect them with each other. We have our graph. Now since our parabola opens downward, this means we have a maximum value. So we have a max value of 7 over 2. And this occurs at x equal to negative 1 half. So that was it for section 7.6. Remember, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Just email me and I can help you out.